given your experience, of course, as having run a major pharmaceutical company, where are you focused in terms of the various uh, efforts underway right now, whether it's antivirals or vaccines, as having the best chance of getting to market quickly? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it's really an unprecedented effort. It's, it's a war. And uh, there are so many companies around the world that are working hard at it. It's uh, lots of over, over 100 projects uh, that are real concrete projects. Uh, where I see it happening, I think we're going to break records with vaccines. Vaccines take 5 to 20 years to show up. I think we're going to get a vaccine between 12 months and 18 months. But we're trying different ways, totally unobvious ways to get there. We're seeing the acceleration of acceleration of innovation, just trying new, new approaches. So vaccines are going to come next year. But in the meantime, I think we're going to do fine with a fast cycle response to this situation. So we've gone through a very painful national lockdown. We're now opening up the country. And as we go forward without a vaccine, there are going to be outbreaks. There'll be local pockets of outbreaks. But we're, we're really going to see a public that's very alert, very, very fast cycle, very fast response, very good, rapid, accurate diagnostics. And then, fortunately, we're going to have some fast-acting therapeutics that's going to bring this under control. Already, remdesivir, a product that I talked about on the 2nd of March, has been approved by the FDA for COVID-19. The one that I'm most excited about is the monoclonal antibody cocktail, which Regeneron is working on. That thing stops the virus from attaching to the cell in the first place. It intercepts the virus before it gets to the cell. And of course, remdesivir slows down the viral replication. If it does get into the cell, it slows it down. So we have two separate lines of defense, and I'm very optimistic that we'll be able to make this a manageable situation just like HIV became a manageable situation with drugs and drug cocktails. I think we're going to see the same here. Right. And hopefully the vaccine will right. completely take care of this. As we manage towards, as you say, a vaccine as soon as perhaps 12 to 18 months. But testing is such an important part of that, Fred. Uh, are we where we need to be in terms of being able to quickly determine whether somebody has the virus or the antibodies for the virus? I think we're making great uh, progress. This morning we heard about this uh, test, which uh, doctors can administer in their own clinics. There are about 40,000 of these instruments in various doctors' offices. You, the doctors can learn about this in five minutes. There's also the rapid test that Abbott came up with uh, a few weeks ago, where you can also get the results in five minutes to 15 minutes. Um, if you really want 100% accuracy, you can get the PCR test. Uh, so in many ways, if you have a test and there's an 85 percent chance that it's uh, accurate, you can start uh, feeling better. But in the meantime, you can take some drugs until you get the 100 percent assurance, which might be a day or two or th three later, which is the PCR gold standard. But we are really seeing massive innovation in diagnostic testing, just like we're seeing in drugs and in vaccines. It's these three corners of the triangle that we're really working hard on. Hey, Fred, I, I wonder, you know, when you talk about some of the commentary we're getting from uh, Big Pharma on therapeutics or vaccines, are you surprised that the language hasn't been more neutral or more circumspect more sort of under promise, over deliver, or do you really believe that their progress is even uh, ahead of the kind of rhetoric we're hearing? I personally think that uh, <laughs> the progress is enormous. Uh, it, it really, the bubbling science, the amount of stuff that's uh, shown up in knowledge in the last five years is enormous. And the number of tools that are at play are, is enormous. And we are now working with an interconnected world. So when they found out about this virus in late December last year, the genome was already known to labs by mid-January. This is how fast information is traveling. So with this acceleration of acceleration, I really believe that we have very powerful tools to contain this. The HIV took about 10 years to get contained. Uh, 
But now I think we're going to see this one get contained very quickly with, with all the modern tools we have. And also we got educated with the problems that we saw with SARS in 03 and MERS in 09. Uh, we, we did learn a lot about these kinds of viruses. And I think we got a running start when this one came along. This is a bad one. It's very contagious. But it's, it's really part of the same family in, in many ways. Fred, it's Sarah. I wonder how we're going to look back at this period in terms of health care and unintended consequences, children not getting vaccines, people not going in to get diagnosed or, or treated for life-threatening conditions, often cases, cancers, heart attacks, strokes, just because COVID-19 has completely taken over. How, how are you thinking about the longer-term impact? Well, the longer-term impact, in my opinion, is very clear. This is the century of bioscience. Uh, this is when a lot of uh, innovation occurs going forward. Last century, it was the century of physics. A lot of good things happening last century. Uh, it's really a pity that only 50% of the population gets the flu vaccine. Uh, but that's partly because many feel that if they do get the flu, uh, they'll be able to deal with it. But we really hope that we go forward into an era where people get vaccinated at much larger numbers than they have been in the past. And I think this, in some ways, is, is really a wake-up call. Hey, take care of your health. In life, health is precious. Protect it with the best practices and the best medicines you can find. It is the most valuable thing you're going to have in your journey in life. I think that's a basic philosophy that's going to be drilled into us as a result of this horrible thing that's happened to mankind in the last few months.